Welcome to Engine Adventures. Today, something I've been waiting a long time for. It's the 2020 Ram Rebel, which is cool. But it's got the three liter eco diesel in it. How often do you get in your truck and see 745 miles of range left? Pretty awesome. But if you're wondering what it sounds like, let's go ahead and give it a cold startup. And by the time you get to the exhaust, you can hardly hear the diesel clatter. It's actually a very quiet truck, and especially inside where that diesel is hardly noticeable at all. All right, so we are pulling, just finished pulling a pretty steep grade. Uh, it's like 8% or something like that. And speed limit is 55, and it's pretty long. It was a couple of miles long. The transmission's at 212 degrees which is okay, that's not too bad. Outside temperature is only 53 right now, it's not too hot. But it did just fine, it was kind of uh, drama-less. It was just drama-free, no problem climbing that hill. Um, we are about 45, 40 miles in probably on the uh, fuel mileage run, pulling a 5,000 pound trailer, but this trailer has the biggest flat front face on it of just about any camper trailer out there. So it's pretty hard to pull once you get into higher speeds. And we're averaging 10.6 miles per gallon. We've gained probably about 1,300 feet from where we started. So we're gonna start on the downhill here pretty soon. And we should see that jump up one interesting thing on this truck, you have the gear limit buttons on the steering wheel, and you can push down, and it will show up on the instrument cluster. It'll show you what gear you're in and what you have the limit set at. So it's not a manual mode where it holds in the gear you choose, but it does limit the highest gear it can go into. So if you have it set to six gear, it won't go above six gear. This is an eight-speed automatic as well. Something noteworthy on this truck is the air suspension. So this has four-corner auto-leveling air suspension. And when you're towing, even if you're in tow haul mode, it will lower as you reach 60 miles an hour or whatever it is, unless you go in and manually turn that feature off. So if you're using a weight distribution hitch, that's something to be aware of. And also setting up a weight distribution hitch on an auto leveling suspension vehicle can be a little bit different. And I'll have to go through a video on proper weight distribution setup and then specifically on one with air suspension or auto leveling suspension rather, because when it's four corner, it just kind of makes things a little more difficult. Uh, this truck, I was towing without a weight distribution hitch, so I didn't have to worry about it, but I did do some testing with it to get some information and did learn quite a bit about weight distribution systems on trucks with auto leveling four corner suspension. All right, real quick, I wanted to show you that with this barn door, you still can't open it when you have a trailer attached. So. You can kind of get in there because you can get this other half open. And that allows you to reach down in there. So yeah, I guess you can get into it a little bit, but it would be nice. If they had split it down the middle, you'd be able to get in there, even with a trailer attached. But then you've got the handle on your logo and the camera and stuff. It's always best to have the camera dead center. So they might, I don't know, have been able to do it, but ultimately, uh, the 60-40 split makes it a little hard to get into the back when you have a trailer. 
thanks to all you guys I've hit a thousand subscribers and I decided to give away something to the first person that commented and it just happened to be Jared and so Jared I've already reached out to him he's got a set of these on its way to his house right now it takes me so long to get these videos out that Jared has already received these and he's used them or is going to be using them with his brother who has a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon that they take off-roading all the time so these will see some good use and I'm glad to hear that check out my video on testing these and I did use them a little bit with the Tundra as well but we didn't I don't think I posted much video of that one um, but with the uh, Trail Boss we use these and they make quite a bit of a difference so anyway thank you Jared for all your support he was the first one to comment after a thousand after I hit a thousand subscribers and he's been following since close to the beginning so I mean, I'm basically still at the beginning, I guess, if I've only got a 1,000 subscribers. But anyway, Jared, thank you so much. These are on the way to your house. And as a thank you to all of you, I've decided to do another giveaway. This one anyone can go in and just sign up for. I will have the link below once it's up and ready to go. But there will be a few items. The first item I'm going to cover now is the MyFAC first aid kit from MyMedic. And there's also a discount code that goes with it. So if you're looking for a new first aid kit, uh, use EA15 to get 15% off of anything you purchase from MyMedic. But come Labor Day, we're planning to give this thing away. So this is from MyMedic. It is a MyFAC advanced first aid kit. And it's got a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to read through everything, but just to give you some ideas. Uh, it's got the chest seal which is just a big pad if you get a big breathing wound or whatever used for punctures in your chest. Um, CPR shield, a nasal airway, lots of stuff for bleeding, the tourniquet, um, quick clot, all the sorts of bandages, non-adherent pads, the sterile pads, there's a glow stick there, chem light, bunch of different wraps, it's got some different solutions saline solutions and stuff like that it's got all sorts of stuff in it everything you need is in there burn stuff uh, it's got some additional um, water tablets what are those called for uh, energy like to the electrolytes there we go it's got the electrolyte stuff it's got some paracord a whistle survival blanket uh, moleskin stuff the splint for a sp finger splint I mean, anyway all sorts of stuff in this pack I don't want to take it all apart because I'm not sure I'll be able to get it all back in there really well um, it does also have the molly straps on it so you can mount it to whatever this is a great one for a vehicle it's compact I mean it's not that big of a kit but it has everything you need in it um, I recommend if you are going to be winning this that you learn how to use the stuff that's in there Don't just try and do a nasal passage on your friend without Knowing how to do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll be updating you more with Other items that will be in the giveaway. So be sure to watch and then we'll announce that giveaway should start Maybe beginning or middle of August should end around Labor Day Now to the whole point of this video so the fuel mileage runs, I thought I had more footage of it, but I actually don't. This is not the trailer I pulled, but it's similar enough that it works. Uh, the fuel mileage empty for this thing on the 100 mile loop was 26.4 miles per gallon, which is what the computer read. The actual calculated value was only 25.7 miles per gallon. And then moving on to the loaded run with the trailer attached, Again, the computer read a little bit high, and it read 13.2 miles per gallon over that same route, and uh, the calculated value was 12.1 miles per gallon. As far as driving notes on that, the truck wandered a little bit empty. Hooking a trailer up without weight distribution made it wander a little bit more. It wasn't uncontrollable or anything, but there was a little bit more fatigue there versus other trucks that I've tested. 
Uh, most recently, the Ford F-250, I believe, with the gas engine was one I just took, and the Nissan Titan 2020 Titan. Um, this one seemed to wander more than both of those, but it does have big off-road tires that are wide, and maybe that has something to do with it. But and I imagine with a weight distribution hitch that it would have been just fine, and even as it was, it wasn't that big of a deal, but just something I did notice. Thanks for watching Engine Adventures review of the 2020 Ram Rebel Eco Diesel. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you liked it, be sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and comment down below. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down, but be sure to comment and let me know why. Have a great day.